Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly, if you're new here, and I am a freelance illustrator, also called the Toasty Tiger. Today's video is a bit of a different one because I decided to do more of a sit down style video um, just to change it up a bit and I thought it would be really fun to go through my art book collection which is a decent size, I mean I still want to keep growing it and growing it um, but yeah it's not tiny and it's not massive but it's going to take a while to get through so this video might be a bit of a longer one so I would grab your favourite drink of choice and maybe a wee snacky snack. So let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> the first book is called Mind Your Business, um, a workbook to grow your creative passion into a full-time gig by Ilana Griffo. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. I'm going to butcher so many names in this video, let's be real. <laughs> Basically, this is a book that I decided to pick up after kind of deciding that I was going to get more serious about starting my own online small business. And I have to say, this book um, has been invaluable for trying to understand some of the basic concepts that go into coming up with what your brand will be called, like how you'll design your website. Um, all that sort of stuff. It's not a crazy in-depth book at all. Um, it kind of, like if you're looking for like a book that tells you absolutely every single detail you should look out for when it comes to running a business, whether big or small, this is not the book for that. This is more like if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed like I was with like, what, what's the first steps? Like what the heck do you, what do I, what am I doing with my life kind of thing? Um, this book, kind of gives you a bit of direction when you're feeling a bit directionless. I would highly recommend this book to anyone who is interested in starting a small business and I really like the way it's laid out. It's like quite visual for us artists or creatives, um, easy to understand and it just made me feel a wee bit more like I had a grasp on where I was going. So that's the first book. Um, this is probably my favourite out of the business books I'm maybe going to show you, but we'll see. On to the next one. And next, and next, the next book um, called Don't Get a Job, Make a Job. How to make it as a creative graduate. And please don't mind the state of my book because I'm the kind of person where I put a book in a bag to remember to read because if I don't see it, in the flesh I will forget about it and forget to read. So <laughs> basically I've had it since uni days and it's been here, there and everywhere. So yeah, that's why it's a bit monkey, but it's still a good book. Um, this book is not only visually really appealing <laughs> to me, it's full of so many real life stories from artists who um, have paved their own way in the corporate world. Whether or not they couldn't get a job or they got into a job and didn't like it and was like, I kind of feel like I could do this differently or better or whatever. Um, this book is always a good reminder to myself that creatives can pave their own path when it comes to employment um, or making money. We as artists are always evolving, always adapting to the ever-changing job landscape and should never feel a need to follow the norm. And it goes through examples in the workplace where you might need some advice as a creative and how they went about creating their own business and how it became successful. Um, this book is just a really good reminder that creatives are needed, they're really important and we can pave our own path. Basically, that's what I get from this book. It's a good book. Highly recommend. Burn your portfolio, stuff they don't teach you in design school but should is a bit of a beast of a book in some ways. Essentially this book is full to the brim of practical real life advice on how to survive in a corporate job in a creative job. I bought this book also in uni times. I kind of think of it as 
a book that was written by an older, wiser, more successful, more established artist who has written a how-to manual on how to survive life in the real world when it comes to being a designer. But also not just surviving, but thriving in it. It's like in the workplace, you're not really told necessarily all the time what not to do. And most of the time you'll end up doing what you shouldn't do by accident. And the bosses are like, and it's best to avoid making the mistake in the first place. So basically this kind of goes through those mistakes that you can make and how not to make them. So this, it's got lots of like wee life tips and advice as well. Um, it's really easy to read, really easy language. And if you are in the corporate world, well it's not just for in the corporate world, I'm sh I think freelancing it applies to because potentially you'll work with clients. Um, so it goes through that as well. So it's just a good book to own. I've seen this book come up quite a few times um, in other art book recommendations. Find Your Artistic Voice examines what an artistic voice is, the importance of one's own artistic voice and how to channel and develop that artistic voice that is unique to the individual. This book contains a number of interviews with artists where they discuss how they got into the creative job that they're in, they discuss how they develop their own creative voice and they give advice on how to navigate some of the ups and downs when it comes to learning about one's own artistic voice. I think I thought when I bought this that I would read it and I'd be like boom I know my artistic voice and I have it all sorted now but that's that's definitely not the case and um, I feel like finding one's own artistic voice is a lifelong endeavour and will not be sorted by one book but it's still a good book to own. It's still it's helpful to read through when you're feeling a wee bit lost in terms of like oh I don't have a voice, what is my voice? All those kind of like existential questions that you get when you're like oh I'm not individual enough or I'm not you know, I feel burnt out or all those kind of things. It has like a wee mix of all that kind of stuff. Um, it's not necessarily the best book I've read. I still think it's worth a read. Not much to say on this one. It's kind of self-explanatory because of the title. <laughs> I mean, I can't not have this book in this collection. It was kind of hard to know what section to put this in. It was hard to put it into a category basically. Um, but I decided to just put it in the business one. It doesn't really matter, it doesn't have its own section really. This book feels like it's everywhere at the minute and for good reason. In a nutshell, uh, it's kind of like a written form of an art retreat that you could go on and instead of going on the art retreat, you can experience it in a book. I think that's kind of hard. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's basically like going on a, on a so many week journey where you end up basically falling back in love with art if you're feeling burnt out or you feel like you are struggling to find your own creative voice or you know negative self-talk like this book is just so good for trying to understand what's kind of holding you back in terms of creating. I bought this book last summer it's actually been on my wish list for years but I kind of kind of kept putting it off buying it I don't really know exactly why but <laughs> I've made your regrets in not reading it sooner because I reached a point with my art where um, I was just feeling a bit directionless and overwhelmed every time I sat down to create I just I had this really really strong negative self-talk where every time I sat down to make something I would like poo-poo myself and just be like no like I've only drawn a few lines and I'm like no this is rubbish like I what am I doing like what is this and it was insanely disheartening and distracting but mainly just really kind of upsetting and it's something I think I've struggled with since like I'm gonna say school times because constantly creating art all the time and always thinking about how it's gonna be perceived by others perceived by your teacher your art teacher perceived by other pupils it gets really hard to remember to create art for you and not for everybody else and not for just always being seen by people um, and I'm saying something I'm still working through I feel like this this book is like I will keep coming back to this book because I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna sit here and be like oh my word it changed my life because um, I haven't actually finished it yet I have only got so many weeks in but I have to tell you the few weeks that I have done of this completely helped me 
quiet, the, the negative self-talk, the feeling overwhelmed when I sit down at the page or canvas or procreate or whatever it is, just kind of just getting on with it and not letting the negative self-talk get to me as much. I mean, we all have bad days, we all have days where we're just naturally a bit more negative towards ourselves. but this book explains so much to me that I can never put into words about my relationship with art. I just feel like this this book has changed the game. I'm kind of like, I wish I'd read this earlier and I will recommend it to anyone who, even if they're not necessarily creating art, but they're like, they want to get in touch with their creative side or whatever, I just 110% will recommend this book. So yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? <laughs> Daily Painting um, by Carol Marine. I think that's how we say her name. This book is an instructional book on revolving around the idea of painting small and often. This book helps artists with colour mixing, understanding value, composition, fighting artist block and much much more. It's kind of like a whole mishmash of things but the main thing I love about it is that it's full of so many stunning oil paintings that really inspires me. I, I'm just, I'm such a sucker for um, for oil painting. I just, I haven't actually learned how to oil paint yet, but I just look at this book and it makes me want to do it. It makes me want to make oil paintings and I always get so fired up and ready to paint whatever, with whatever medium when I look at this book. It's a good encouraging book as an artist. Whole mishmash of practical stuff too. Daily painting. Paint small and often to become a more creative, productive and successful artist. That's that's basically it in a nutshell. Really nice book. Glad I have it in my library. Following on from the last book, I picked up uh, both of these books, which are both on oil painting, because it's a medium that I've been wanting to use for years and I, <laughs> I still haven't really, I haven't painted with oil more than once in my life, I think. I mean, I've tried, I'm trying to digitally, but it's obviously not the same as painting in real life with medium practically, with your own hands and paintbrush. I've kind of always found it to be an intimidating medium to use. I think it's because the old masters used oil paint. I think that's why I just am like, oh, it's for people who know how to paint really well and it's for people that technically speaking are just excellent and they know what they're doing. I know that's silly. I know it's silly to think that way, but that's genuinely how my brain works. I'm like, oh, oil paint. Once, I, once I've made it as an artist, I will use oil paint, but no. I need to like work through that. These books cover what materials you need for oil painting, the key techniques that are unique to oil painting like fat over lean, alla prima, impasto, etc. Colour mixing, composition and all that good stuff. I really like how this book in particular walks you through the stages in their process um, so you can see visually what they're doing, why they're doing it um, and it's really helpful as a visual person. To, to see that on the page when you're painting and not be like, oh word, I have no idea what I'm doing. Especially as like, if you're a visual learner, I feel like we're clearly visual people as artists. So this is really helpful. And side note, but why do recipe books still print recipes without visuals with them? It doesn't help anybody, it doesn't make sense. So just a, why is that a thing? But yeah. <laughs> This wee book is really cute, it's small, and it's not as in-depth as the other one, but it goes through what I was talking about, like those key techniques that oil painters use. It's a bit more surfacey, but it's a good introduction if you've never touched oil paints. And that's me because I still have to learn so much. But yeah, it's just, it's a good book to have on your shelf. Um, if you feel also like me who are intimidated by oil paints, this might be the book for you. Drawing a Complete Guide by Giovanni Givardi. This is a great book that I was gifted by my best friend when I was about 12 years old, I think. And I've had it ever since. Not just for sentimental reasons, but because it is genuinely a really 
great book to own as an artist. It's so good for trying to understand some of the key concepts or principles of drawing, like form, the impact of lighting on a subject, different sketching techniques, understanding human anatomy, a little bit of perspective in it, and how to draw landscapes. Um, so I think it's a great book to own whether you're a beginner or like well established in your in your art it's kind of one that i would come back to it's not necessarily a book for beginners but it is a book that's incredibly helpful for all artists to have in their collection and i hope to keep it and pass it down one day maybe if i have children i think it would be a great book to to just always have in my collection i will treasure this book forever thank you harriet if you're watching i love this book and it's been really helpful, so. <laughs> These wee books called Morpho, and it's like a wee series on different aspects of the anatomy and key parts of drawing, hands, feet, people, everything you could need. <laughs> this one is hands and feet, and then this one is fat and skin folds. These books are great for trying to understand uh, the human form. They don't go crazy into depth on like the human body and like how, what everything means. It's just kind of like a visual guide for like referencing um, when you're trying to draw particular parts of the body. Basically, they're great if you just want a no fuss, quick reference for particular parts of the body when sketching. This one in particular, I've just realized that I probably can't show you much of inside because I don't know if YouTube is weird about parts of the body being seen. Um, but I'm really glad that I picked this up because it's, I thought it was quite refreshing to see so many bodies depicted with like roll fats and different lumps and bumps which like the average human has. Um, I just feel like a lot of body references that I've, that I've seen in art books have always been like really like the ideal body type if that makes sense like is in just really you know slim, muscular, you know all that kind of stuff so I thought it would be really good to and really helpful to be able to study from references of people with all like a wider selection of body types. It's also fab for trying to understand visually how gravity works on the body and how that also plays into the movement of the body when drawing. So I think he has like a whole series of ones. These are the two I have so far and I, I probably will pick up more because I need more. I've just realized when I've gone through this collection that I need more references. Um, I don't have enough reference books. So yeah, Perspective Made Easy by Ernest R. Norling. I suppose learning perspective is kind of like eating your vegetables. Like we don't always want to do it, but when we do it, like it really helps us and it's good for us and la di da da. Um, and it helps us in the long run. So this helps you as an artist in the long run. I get it. Um, <laughs> I basically I purchased this book after it was recommended by my lecturer in university in his reading list. Um, he, he had so many good books in his reading list but the irony now though is that as an illustrator I'm kind of like trying to push the boundaries of perspective like as in I'm deliberately trying to not draw completely in perspective so it's all a bit confusing <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's a good book to have on your shelf, whether you're a beginner or more established. Like you just always, I think perspective is something that we're all constantly trying to learn more about. Um, so yeah, perspective. And we've got to two books, which I would say are probably the books I would most recommend in this collection in terms of getting better with your art. And they are Color and Light by James Gurney, which I don't think will be a surprise to anyone that owns this book because it's just freaking awesome. And another one called Painting Beautiful Skin Tones with color and light in oil, pastel, and watercolor, but basically any medium that you want to use by Chris Saper. It's a bit hard to hold these both up at the same time. <laughs> but basically, these two books are, in my opinion, chef's kiss for any artist who wants to better the craft. I can't tell you how helpful these books have been 
for understanding the different types of light that we get in everyday life, whether that's sunlight, indirect light, artificial light, neon light. This all like, impacts the subject and these books both explain in depth how light impacts colour. I consistently refer back to these books all the time when I'm making art, whether it's digitally, um, in the flesh, or traditionally I should say. <laughs> Anytime I'm unsure of what colour a shadow should be or whether or not it, my lighting makes sense when I look back at the image I've made or if my chosen colour palette works okay, these books have the answer basically. They're just that good. Okay, so moving on to books on digital painting. The first one I picked up was this one, um, Beginner's Guide to Digital Painting and Procreate how to create art on an iPad. And then I also later got this kind of same series but on how to create characters. These two guides are awesome to have if you're interested in digital painting at all in Procreate. I have found this one in particular invaluable on trying to understand all the different aspects of working in the Procreate app and painting digital paintings. I'm still learning a bunch by the way, um, so I'm not gonna lie. I go back to this book often to try and recall like the different gestures you can use in the app, what adjustment layer does what. This book will well and truly get you going when it comes to digital painting in Procreate. This book I haven't really picked up as much because I think it's a similar concept except it's focused on creating characters and I kind of feel like if you have the other one you don't necessarily need this one but if you're someone that's particularly interested in creating just focused on characters then this is good too. If you are stuck in Procreate this this book this book is your go-to. So moving on to art history I have these three books. The series of art history books are like mini introductions to the individual famous artists throughout history. Sometimes I can feel a bit intimidated when it comes to looking at like big chunky art history books of different artists that I'm interested in because it's almost like too much information all at once. So I feel like having these condensed books of particular artists that I am interested in learning more about is really helpful. I mean, it's probably, the target audience is probably like for people that are, you know, younger than I am, but I don't care. Like I, I love how these books feel. I love the fact that they have really cool quotes on the back, like meaningful quotes. These books provide condensed, digestible information on the artists and like their early life, their career path, um, how they ended up becoming the famous artists that they are. And it has such, they, both, they all have such wonderful illustrations and it just kind of keeps you more engaged in, in their story. Um, but like, like it's just so, like it's so much more immersive makes it so much more interesting to read as well, keeps you captivated and does our love of picture books really ever end when we're the creative artistic type? I don't think so. So um, I really want to collect, it's kind of like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. I really want to have like all of the ones that they released. I really, really enjoy these. I only have Rembrandt, Cezanne and Goga, um, but I would like to collect them all, basically. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> I won't go into too much depth on these two books because I feel like they're kind of self-explanatory. I basically picked up this copy of Van Gogh or Van Gogh or Van Gogh, like, um, does anyone know it, the pronunciation of his name? I don't know. I was basically sifting through so many books on Van Gogh because he's one of my favourite artists. I love him so much. I find so much inspiration in his story, in his work. He's an artist I always go back to. I basically wanted a book where I could just see all of his artwork kind of at once or like very just like a flick through picture book of all of the work he's really done. I just wanted to see as much of his work as possible in one book so that's why I got that one. Um, and then this book I've had for ages. I'm trying to learn as much art history as I go and I have this small book on 19th century French art and it goes through some of the different art movements and some of the key artists that were like at their peak during the 19th century. Oh, I've just realized they have other titles in this series. Mm, okay, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> 
Um, I can't wait to invest in more art history books like this um, in the near future. Just oh, so many books and so little time and not enough dollar to buy all these books, but yeah. Symbols in art. Although I haven't read this book in depth yet, I knew it was a must buy because I love, love, love the symbolism that can be studied in different paintings through our different historical periods. I really enjoy going to those art museums in like in different cities across the world where you can put on like a wee headset and kind of just completely just hone in on the painting that you're going through or the sculpture or the tapestry and just learn about the symbolism, the history, about the artist. And I basically just wanted to have more of an understanding of being able to read, read <laughs> paintings. Like if I looked at a painting from the Renaissance period or whatever, I'd love to be able to pick out different symbols and almost interpret that painting a bit for myself, if that makes sense. And this book, I just knew I needed to pick up because it goes through all the common symbols that you see in paintings and I just love history and especially art history. It felt like a really important book to pick up. Although I haven't read it cover to cover, I am definitely really happy I have this on my shelf. Um, the last book in my art history section is, last but not least, Frida Kahlo. I've always had, for some reason, a real fascination with Latin America, South America, just the history, like so many different fascinating civilizations and all different kinds of stuff. But anyway, I'm not going to go on a tangent. So naturally, I was going to be interested in Frida Kahlo. I love the art, the music, the culture from her part of the world. And I basically was intrigued how someone who went through so much physically, mentally, emotionally, did such exquisite artwork and said so much from such a young age. If you don't know about her life, I highly recommend reading up about her or watching videos on her because she's just a really fascinating person. It's also been fascinating to always research more into and explore the works of prominent female artists throughout history who kind of paved the way for other female artists. Yeah, her story is incredibly moving and inspiring and her style is impeccable, <laughs> not just like in her art, but like the way she dressed, everything, it's class. She's cool. I actually have a piece of art or a print of her in my studio, so. Without a doubt, this book in particular is stunning. <laughs> it's just stunning. I mean, can we just take a moment to just take it in? It's beautiful, it's beautiful and it even has like a glossy texture and it's just... Hikala's art is breathtaking. It is... It's so inspiring to me. I mean, and the thing is a lot of, a lot of her work is traditional, I believe, and she just has such a way with color and tone and value and the characters are if you're at all into watercolors or cats and and cute cute things, it's just part of this book which particularly inspires me is um, the pages from her sketchbook. It looks like she uses like some kind of really nice studio pen of some kind, and I just love the line work. I just think it's unreal the way she draws characters and cats and plants and buildings. It's all just so inspiring to me. It's just gorgeous from cover to cover. I, I don't really know what else to say about this book except go get it now kind of thing. Order it now. <laughs> the next super inspiring book is... I'm probably gonna butcher this name as well. Um, <laughs> the Art of Pernil Orum? Or Orum? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. We're just gonna, you know, whoever Whoever this artist is, um, Pernille's art is, she has such a command of colour and saying so much with minimum line work. Like, this is just a simple kind of sketch with warm ink. And just the form, everything, 
it's just one of those art books that I own. It's almost like it's almost like like a coffee coffee table book. She goes into a bit of color theory and she clearly knows what she's talking about when it comes to color theory because her color palettes are gorgeous and I take so much inspiration from her color palettes. I mean this <laughs> this character has like this character has like so much swag. It's so cool. She provides a lot of inspiration for me in terms of um, character design and um, her color palettes, her line work. She even has some like tutorials at the end, like how to draw hair with style and movement and things like this. So it's a great um, reference book for those kind of things. I would love to buy some of her art at some point, just same as Hikala's art. Um, it's just a bit awkward with being in the UK. It's a bit hard to get certain things at the minute, but maybe one day. <laughs> this is another book, which is incredibly beautiful, stunning to own. I think I found uh, Loish, Pernil, Oron, and um, Hikala all through potentially YouTube. I would love to one day be able to draw and paint like these guys. They're just unbelievable. Loish who actually, I think she actually worked on some of the concept art for one of my favourite video games called Horizon Zero Dawn. I think she helped create Aloy, the main character in it. I'm like, girl, <laughs> she's so good. The main thing that strikes me about Loish's art is she has, she conveys so much emotion and movement through her line work. She's really, really good at conveying so much movement in a static image and so much emotion through the line is quite like energetic. Her command of colour is gorgeous. I mean, it's just the transitions between colours, like the almost like ombre effect, it's just stunning. I think these art books in particular kind of refresh or reset my brain in this, as a creative in the sense that I look at them and I feel energized, I feel like oh I could do anything or like just feel really excited about painting or drawing again. And that's that's kind of what you want in your art books. You wanna you wanna have those art books that aren't just how-tos or bazillion facts about like art history or whatever, you need something that also energizes you, fuels you and reminds you why you love it so much in the first place and I just feel like these art books in particular in this section are exactly that. These next two books are probably in a lot of people's collections. I mean, <laughs> Tangled not only is it an incredible movie but the artwork in this book is just visually so good. It's, I mean, Rapunzel is such an incredible character, so stunning. I just look at this book and I just feel really happy inside, basically. It's like, transports you to the world of Tangled. You can see all the wee references to creating something that looks really historically accurate, if that makes sense. The cottagey style tar and the landscapes. Maximus, oh my word. <laughs> Maximus's character design is unbelievable. I couldn't not buy this book because Tangled is one of my favorite um, Disney movies. It's not the, my favorite favorite, but in terms of like, it's such a feel good movie. It's just an easy to watch movie and Visually, this movie just blew me away in terms of like the lantern scene. The fact that Rapunzel was also like arty and the music. Um, I love that the Disney books are full of so much detail. You can basically see from A to B how they got to the end project of the movie. If you don't own this book and you love Disney and you love Rapunzel, like I, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I would say go get the book because following on from that, I have the book of Brave. Brave is, um, it's really hard to choose which of these books is better. I would say they're both, they're just slightly different. Brave has like a completely different tone to it. It just feels a bit darker, but I think that kind of meets the subject matter is in like in Scotland, kind of reflects the atmosphere of the country. In the UK, we just generally have 
darker, moodier skies than some other countries and I just feel like the movie really captured that. And they really captured that tone in this book because there's so much dark, mysterious colour palette choices and you can capture like the mysticism kind of feeling of it through the really dark skies and dark forests and then the will-o'-the-wisps that contrasts with it where it's like really bright, brightly coloured. Yeah, the magical element of the movie just really comes through in this book but I just knew myself I had to get this book because I love the film and in school, in art class, we went around and said, oh, which Disney princess would we all be? And I got Merida because of my curly hair. And back in the day, I was like, oh, I don't want to be Merida. Merida's like crazy and she's not necessarily as pretty as your stereotypical princess and stuff. But now I'm like, do you know what? Merida is amazing. Merida is independent. She don't need no man, even though I have a man. Um, <laughs> and she's just she's full of so much fire and passion and i think i can relate a lot to her so um yeah i love this book if you can't tell <laughs> such a good book so the next book is rooms an illustration and comic collection by senbon umishima i saw this and i instantly had to get it because the color palettes are insane. I really really love Studio Ghibli and I really love Japanese kind of style illustration. I don't actually own a whole bunch of this kind of style of things in book form so I knew it would be worth my while picking this up. This is kind of like a book where I look at it and I take inspiration from it for drawing on some of like the manga inspiration even though I don't really draw manga. I also don't have a clue what <laughs> anyone is saying in this book because it's it's in Japanese but I'm sure I could put like some kind of translator over the top. I think if you're a fan of animes or Studio Ghibli or this kind of style I think you'd really enjoy this book. It's just got such cheerful colours and I love the fact that it's centred around the idea of like different rooms in different people's houses. It's just really cute. It's just really, really nice. This next book I think I did a wee teaser for. It is Working From Home With A Cat by Heidi Moreno. I got this as part of like a wee birthday treat to myself last year. Can we just appreciate how stinking cute this book is? When I saw this online, I knew I just had to get it. I adore Heidi Moreno's illustration style. Like she has this really particular way that she draws cats and obviously anything that has cats, I'm going to instantly fall in love with it. The perfect category, like characterization of cats. <laughs> the far off kind of looks, utter joy at times and, and then pure madness at other times. Like she just encapsulates how multifaceted cats are and how cool they are to live with. Every time I flip through this book I just instantly feel uplifted and joyful and just it's just so cute. I mean I would love to be able to make a book like this someday or like or maybe like a comic I've never made a comic but I think like a comic style or magazine kind of thing would be really cool so if you love cats uh, this book is definitely for you <laughs> So moving on to a very fun section of this video which is children's illustrated books. I didn't think that I would be this person that collects children's illustrated books but apparently I am. Children's illustrated books are full of so much good content for like if you are into illustration so I'm like why didn't I think of this <laughs> earlier? I think I was just like worried that people would be like uh what's this like full adult buying children's books for? If anyone's judging me I'm just like it, it's it's for for my niece, um, you know, not for me. So, <laughs> first of all, uh, this book is just, wow. I mean, I saw the cover and I was like, I need this book in my life. It's just got the most magical textury, but it looks like almost like color pencils. I would love to be able to draw in this kind of style someday, just like really loose textury. I love the use of the positive and negative space in the book. I love, oh, I love this kind of line work. 
um, where it's just really sketchy and interesting to look at. It's just a, such a pleasing book to read. It's just the perfect size, the colors are incredible, the story's great, and yeah, I definitely am going to be on the lookout for more books by this artist. I love this book. I love this book so much. Yeah. <laughs> this book is another book which is so stinking cute it's not even funny <laughs> it's the fact that at the start of the book they're making cake and i'm like cake is one of my favorite things in the entire world so i was like it's just the wee touches of comedy like funny things and this it's just like i get it i get it i love it but the main thing i love to about this book and what made me pick it up is that this like simple but like slightly crooked lines like i really love that style and it's something i really want to get into and the textures and the fact that there's like textures um throughout the book and the fact that the characters themselves are super simple simple shapes but it's it's like really stands out and also the font whatever font this is i love it it's so cool i'm like i wish i'd had these books growing up they're just so cute and the colors in this are also fab once again like the texture like the texture of this like sea spray i feel like all these books are fueling my want to design to write and illustrate my own children's books someday that would be that would be a dream moving on to the next one which is a bit more detailed. It's like a more detailed kind of book. To me, this doesn't look instantly straight like a children's illustrated book. Um, it looks more like a comic or something, but what I instantly fell in love with this book is, once again, the textures, the wee like scratches of line work here and there, and the story is really good. It almost looks like a really cool comic for adults, <laughs> is how it looks to me. So I'm like, any kid that gets this is, is in for a real treat. It's definitely a bit more detailed than the other ones I have. I 100% recommend this as well because it's so, it's full of adventure and the colors really pop and I love it. I'm just gonna kind of flick through this one because we're getting near to the end. This one, one, it has cats. So that was like, that was an instant selling point for me, but it's, I just really like the simplicity of the design, the character design once again, and the colors. And I'm always looking for like different ways to illustrate cats because I feel like cats are drawn so much and it's kind of hard to make a cat design really original these days. So it's always good to like see how other artists are, are drawing their cats. I want to get whatever books I have here, that aren't hardback. I would love to get hardback. This book, The Great Storm Whale by Benji Davies, is once again textures impeccable. I love the kind of blend of really bright blues and then like quite natural, more realistic looking brown tones and stuff. This artist, this illustrator kind of doesn't rely too much on line work which is really interesting and something that I would love to try at some point more. I also love the fact that in this book there just seems to be like a bunch of cats popping out of nowhere. Everything looks really cozy and the lighting, the lighting especially in this one is just gorgeous and the story is also beautiful. Having a wee adventure with like your grandparents and stuff like it's just yeah if you love like seaside stories and it's such a good book such a good book okay and last but not least i instantly love fell in love with the style and the color palette it's just it kind of looks like almost a retro kind of picture that you would see from like mid-century so oh, i love mid-century style illustrations so much like if you look at um for instance this wee girl but like, you know, like the simple face design, even him, sorry, spaghetti gingery hair and the like freckles and the really simple like circle eyes. Like that just screams to me like this illustrator is clearly also really loves mid-century style. So I just, that was a real selling point for me. And it's always really cool when a book has, throughout the book, it's mainly horizontal and then they'll have one moment where it's vertical. So you have to turn the book and I just thought that was like really cool. It's like interactive. Basically we're all, I'm just a big child at heart. So we've made it to the end. I think I have covered all the books. I hope 
that you've enjoyed this video. I love hearing what books inspire artists and I'm always on the hunt for like the next book that I really want to add to my wish list. So if you're one of those people, maybe you'll like have seen a book in this collection and be like, oh, I really want to get that. I've really enjoyed going through all my art books and seeing what I have and it's kind of inspired me looking through them all again. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.